Good morning, boys and girls. It's Christmas week. We thought it was never going to get here, and now it's here. How exciting, how wonderful, and it's Jesus' birthday, isn't it? Do you remember what our word is, our new word? It's three letters. Joy, J-O-Y. I knew you wouldn't forget. It's a good job. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, as we read this story together today about the crippled little lamb, we know that each one of us has a special gift. Help us to know that where we are is where you want us. Help us to grow in you. And Lord, just help the children to have such a good week before Jesus' birthday. And help us to all remember that Christmas is Jesus' birthday. And we are the ones that are so blessed because we get the gifts. Oh, Jesus, how much we love you. In your precious son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Yes, it's Jesus' birthday and we get the gifts. Now, on our birthdays, we get the gifts, don't we? But Jesus gave us the best gift of all. Salvation to live in heaven forever and ever with no pain or tears or anything one day. And I said we're going to read a story. And it's a story by, uh, from Max Lucado, and it's called The Crippled Lamb. And many of you probably have already read it or had someone to read it to you. So we're going to do it together, okay? And this is how it starts. Once upon a time in a sunny valley, there lived a little name, a lamb named Joshua. He was white with black spots, black feet, sad eyes. Mm, so sad. You know, he felt sad when he saw the other lambs because they were snow white. They didn't have the spots, okay? So, he, you know, he was kind of sad because he was different. And then he saw the other sheep with their moms and their dads. Oh, he didn't have a mom and dad. So he was kind of all alone like an orphan, wasn't he? And the and he really felt sad when he saw the other lambs running and jumping and playing because he couldn't. He had been born with a leg that didn't work right. So he was crippled and he limped when he walked. So here we go. Look at all the others. They're all white. He has spots and look at his little leg. He's crippled. And see how he's having to walk? He only has three good legs. And he didn't have a mommy and daddy. See all of them with their mommy and daddies? He's all alone, isn't he? See, there's his crippled leg. Oh, he was so sad, you know. That's why he watched instead of playing with the other lambs. And he felt so sad and alone, except when Abigail was around. Abigail was Josh's best friend. She didn't look like a friend for a lamb. She was an old cow. She was brown with white blotches that looked like rain puddles on a path. Her belly was round as a barrel and her voice was always kind and friendly. Some of Josh's favorite hours were spent with Abigail. You wanna see a picture of Abigail? Yeah, that is an unlikely friend, isn't it? I'm trying to, my computer wants to do an update. Let's hope it doesn't. So she was there and he was not alone. Uh-oh. Okay. So you got the picture. There he is. He's by himself, but Abigail's there. See, they wouldn't play with him. They didn't even go anywhere near him. So sad. That's sad. Let's don't ever treat anybody like that. That's not good. You know, when you're different, you feel bad already. And then when people mistreat you and unkind, it makes it worse, doesn't it? Let's be good children of God and behave and be kind to others. Abigail was kind to them. Now that we're talking about Abigail and Joshua, they loved to pretend they were on adventures in distant lands. And Josh liked to listen to Abigail tell stories about the stars. They would spend hours on the hill looking into the valley they were good friends, but even with a friend like Abigail, Josh still got sad. 
It made him sad to be the only lamb who could not run and jump and play in the grass. That's when Abigail would turn to him and say, Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out because he felt left out. And it's nighttime and they're looking at the stars. Isn't she such a sweet cow? And she uses such a gentle voice, soothing him so he doesn't stay sad. No, because it's sad when you think you don't have anybody. Even though he had Abigail, he knew he was not like the other lambs and couldn't do what the other lambs did. Now, Josh wanted to believe her, but it was hard. Some days he just felt alone. He really felt alone the day the shepherds decided to take the lambs to the next valley where there was more grass. The sheep had been in this valley so long that the ground was nearly bare. And all the sheep were excited when the shepherd told them they were going to a new meadow. So here's their shepherds, the ones with the staff. They're the ones that take care of the sheep. Remember, it says the sheep know their shepherd's voice because he's good to them, he protects them, and he loves them. So they're all excited, new grass, fresh grass. Now, that's not appealing to us, but to animals, grass and hay is yum, yum, okay? Be like me getting a piece of cake. So, yeah, it's really good for them. And as they prepared to leave, Josh hobbled over and took his place at the edge of the group. Because remember, he couldn't walk like they could. He had that crippled leg, right? Oh, here comes the hard part. But the others started laughing at him. You're too slow to go all the way to the next valley. Go back, slowpoke. We'll never get there if we have to wait on you. Go back, Joshua. Oh, they were being so mean. Oh, they're just talking to him so bad. That's horrible. Jesus tells us we should always have a kind heart and say nice words. They were not kind, were they? They were ugly. They were very ugly. Don't you know he was really sad now? Oh, we hurt for him, don't we? Then when Josh looked up and saw the shepherd standing in front of him, they are right, my little Joshua. You better go back. This trip is too long for you. Go and spend the night in the stable. Josh looked at the men for a long time. Then he turned slowly and began to lip away. He knew that the shepherd was right. He knew the shepherd loved him. See how he's touching Joshua's face? He knew that he cared for him. He wasn't making fun of him, that he was slow. He knew that he loved and cared for him, and he was telling the truth. He would not be able to keep up because of his little crippled leg. Oh, but still, wouldn't you be sad knowing you're getting left behind? When Josh got to the top of the hill, he looked down and saw all the other sheep headed toward the green grass. Never before had he felt so left out. A big tear slipped out of his eye, rolled down his nose, and fell on a rock. Just then, he heard Abigail behind him, and Abigail said what she always says when Joshua feels sad. Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Slowly, the two friends turned and walked to the stable together. Isn't she such a good friend, giving him good advice, even though he didn't understand that God had a special place for him? when we're going through bad things, isn't it? It's very hard. By the time they got to the little barn, the sun was setting like a big orange ball. Josh and Abigail went inside and began to eat some of the hay out of the feed box. They were very hungry, and the hay tasted good. For a little while, Josh forgot that he had been left behind. Go to sleep, little friend, Abigail said after they finished eating. You've had a hard day. Josh was tired, so he laid down in the corner of some hay and closed his eyes. He felt Abigail lay down beside him, and he was glad to have Abigail as a friend. Isn't that a sweet friend? She didn't just say, hey, go over here and just don't worry about it. She was right there with him. And we see them eating the hay. Out of, it's called a hay box for the animals. But what did we call it in the Christmas story? Manger. And we know somebody very, very special is going to be born in a manger, don't we? So the hay box is the manger, okay? 
Soon Josh was asleep. At first he slept soundly, and he was curled up against Abigail's back. Oh, it was so warm, oh, so comfortable. And in his sleep, he dreamed. He dreamed he was running and jumping and playing. Oh, he was just like all the other sheep. He dreamed of long walks with Abigail through the valley. He dreamed of being a place where he was never left out. He never wanted to feel left out, remember? <gasps> Uh-oh, suddenly, strange noises woke him up. Woohoo! he's in the stable, isn't he? He was dreaming. Everything was so peaceful. He was having such a good dream. Oh, he was so healthy. His little leg was not crippled. But then something woke him up. <gasps> Abigail, he whispered. Wake up. I'm scared. Would you be scared if you heard strange noises all of a sudden? I guess we would, wouldn't we? Abigail lifted her big head and looked around. The stable was dark except for a small lamp that was hanging on the wall. Somebody is in here, Josh whispered. So he was whispering because he didn't know who was in there. They looked across the dimly lit stable. There, lying on some fresh hay in the feed box, which we call the manger, was a baby. A young woman was resting on a big pile of hay beside the feed box. Joshua looked at Abigail, thinking his friend could tell him what was going on. But Abigail was just as surprised as Josh. So they look across and wow, they're not alone anymore. And there's a woman, and now they see this baby laying in their feed box. They didn't know what to think, did they? They were like, what's going on? And Josh looked again at the woman and the child, and he limped across the stable. He stopped next to the mother and looked into the baby's face. The baby was crying. He was cold. The woman picked up the baby and put him on the hay next to her. Now Josh looked around the stable for something to keep the baby warm. See, he thinking of others. He didn't have that, oh, poor me, I can't help no one. He was trying to find something in the barn, in the stable. Usually there was blankets, but not tonight, because the shepherd had taken them on their trip across the valley. So he's looking at the baby. See, the baby's in the manger. Feed box is what they call it. So nice. So nice. Then Joshua remembered his own soft, warm wool. Timidly, he walked over and curled up close to the baby. And what timidly means, he didn't rush over there. He didn't make a big deal. He was quiet. He got over next to the baby. Slow steps. Thank you, little lamb, the baby's mother said softly. And you know who the baby's mother is? We've been talking about her this whole Christmas season. The angel Gabriel came to visit her. Mary, you did remember. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Mary. And the, soon the little child stopped crying and went back to sleep. About that time, a man entered the stable carrying some rags. I'm sorry, Mary, he explained. This is all the cover I could find. It's okay, she answered. This little lamb has kept the new king warm. A king? Joshua looked at the baby and wondered, who might he be? His name is Jesus, Mary spoke, as if she knew Josh's question. He's God's son. He came from heaven to teach us about God. So we know there's Joshua and Mary. So we know the baby's Jesus, right? Remember, there was no room for them at the end. So they had to go to the stable. Wow. God's son, king of kings. That's how much he loved us. He came to be born in a stable. Oh, that's a great love. Just then, there was another noise at the door. It was the shepherds, the ones who had left Joshua behind. Their eyes were big and they were so excited. They said they saw a bright light and heard the angels that began. <gasps> Remember the bright star? Star Bethlehem. Remember who else followed that star? 
three wise men. That star was very bright. And remember first the angel came and told the shepherds ah, the Messiah had been born. And then the whole group of angels joined them and was singing. And now the shepherds had rushed. They followed the star over the stable so they could see the newborn king. Then they saw Joshua next to the baby. Joshua, do you know whose baby this is? He does now. It was the young mother who we know as Mary was speaking. Speaking. Sorry, I'm kind of a little tongue-tied today. She looked at Joshua and smiled. God has heard your prayers, little lamb. This little baby is the answer. Look, there's the shepherds. They have come back. Oh, isn't that a beautiful scene? And she said, God, this baby is the answer. She's telling the little shepherd something great is about to happen. Joshua looked down at the baby Somehow he knew this was a special child, and this was a special moment. He also understood why he had been born with a crippled leg. Had he been like all the other sheep, he would have been in the valley. But since he was different, he was in the stable, among the first to welcome Jesus into the world. <gasps> Isn't that wonderful? And it's his little warm wool body that kept Jesus warm. Oh, oh, and he's right. If he had been born normal, he wouldn't have been there. He'd been left over in that new green pasture, wouldn't he? He would have never seen the baby Jesus. He turned, we're talking about Joshua now, the crippled little lamb, and walked back to Abigail and took his place beside his friend. You were right, he told her. God does have a special place for me. Oh. He learned by being different was okay. You know, God didn't make any of us to be just alike. We're all different in different ways. And you know what? No matter how different we are, we're to be kind to other people. And people should be kind to us when we're different too. So I'm going to just ask you to enjoy this week. Be thanking Jesus for coming down at Christmas time and tell him happy birthday. Now, if you want to draw him a happy birthday cake, that's a good idea because it's his birthday. Just draw a beautiful cake for him. and Or you can just write happy birthday, Jesus, and it, whatever you want to do. But I want you to remember, this is a very special week. This is when God loved us so much he sent his only son. Isn't this a wonderful story? I know I had a lot of hiccups with the computer, and I can tell I'm still going to have problems, so I couldn't start over. But I know you got the story that no matter how different we are, God can use us. You are all special. You're all so wonderful. And I just pray that you just have the best Christmas ever. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your rest. Enjoy the beauty of the season. And be sure to read the Christmas story in Luke. You can read it in Matthew also if you want to. Just remember that this is all about Jesus and his birthday. We're just blessed because we get the gifts. And it's not our birthday, is it? Have a beautiful week. Have a very Merry Christmas. And you know what? God is going to send us back to church soon. I promise. We're still having drive-up church, so we still get to see each other. But soon we'll be able to be back inside the church. Oh, I can't wait to see you. And I love you. And you just take care. Have a great week. Don't forget to draw your birthday cake or a birthday card for Jesus because it's his birthday, okay? Love. Oh, we got to close with prayer, don't we? Let's bow. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful week. Oh, Lord, that you would send your precious son down for us. Happy birthday, Jesus. And thank you that we are the ones that are so blessed on your birthday. Take care of these little children. Bless them and their families. Oh, Lord, just bless our church and our church family. God, you're so good. Happy birthday, Jesus. And in your precious son's name, God, we pray, Jesus Christ, through his precious gift. Amen. His gift was coming for us, wasn't it? And one day he's coming back. That's exciting. I love you.